project starts with something free. Picked up these 55 gallon drums off of Craigslist for nothing. And uh, you know, they probably had dioxin or PCBs in them, but you know, the water tasted fine. So we're done with that. We're gonna use them for this project and separate some rocks. And you might ask why you need a rock separator? Well, I'm going to make one of the uh, separator sections. It's a travel screen. <clears throat> Each section is made of three drums. And so the first step, we need to take the tops off of them. Okay, we're going to cut off the top right along this ridge, all the way around, with a jigsaw, with a nice coarse blade. So to get the saw started, we'll drill a hole. Now I'm going to cut out the uh, bottoms of these barrels, the tops are out of them. So on this one, I'm going to take a uh, square mark set at one inch, and we're going to mark all the way around, just on the bottom here, like this. On the other two, we're going to cut them off up here. So I'll set it for three quarters of an inch and mark it up on this edge. And that will make it the right diameter to fit in the other barrel, which you'll see in a minute. So here I'm drilling a series of holes in the, uh, in the dr middle drum. I'm only going to put holes in the middle drum. The first two just bring the material there. That way the pile that, that, that falls out of rock will be in the center between the supports so it's easier to get in there with the back and pick it up. So these are two inch holes. This will let any rocks smaller than two inch fall out of this section. The previous section is half inch holes. So basically anything between half Two inches should fall out of this section and we'll have graded rock. So I've put the top and the bottom together with some tie downs. So what's going on is we cut the bottom out of this drum and we put it in here, it's sitting on this lip that goes all the way around this drum. This lip right here is where the top drum sits down in and registers on there. So if you pull it down tight, it'll be square with the lower drum. I've marked out the rim here every two inches. We're going to put a screw in there. I'm going to use a coarse threaded drywall screw. They're cheap and they have a good aggressive thread, which is what you want for plastic. Every two inches because we need a lot of fasteners when you're working with uh, plastic and it's really tough but uh, 
it's not like a steel plate. You need a lot of a lot of fasteners versus just a few large ones. So I'm going to pre-drill the holes. Those screws are going into the strongest part of the barrel. If you look at these, the plastic is really thick up in this rim up here. And it's a lot thinner as you go down. It has to do with the process of blow molding it. So we put it through the thickest part here, which is going to hold this base rigid. Because when you cut the bottom off, it got a lot less uh, rigid. It was a lot more flexible. So that's complete. We have a nice rigid joint between those two sections. We've got one more section to put on, this one, and it'll go on the bottom down here. I use the exact same method, and that'll have all three of these assembled together. So this drum will rotate, uh, driven by a cogwheel right here that we'll make later. More on that later on. And it's going to be right around this lip here. We're going to drill a series of holes that those pins will go in from that cog. So to do that, I made a template. So this is just a piece of uh, thin steel. And I drilled a hole one inch apart in a hole. I drilled several holes one inch apart. Drill the starter hole in the area where I want it to, to sit. It's going to sit right off of this little crease here. We just put the first starter hole, put a bolt in it, bolt it in place, and use it as a template to work around the drum. So I can just hold it in place and drill the next hole. And the next one. And I keep doing that until I come back around. The lips on these drums run right in this area about 69 inches all the way around. So oh, good, you get to drill 69 holes. When you get to the end, we'll, we'll check and see how close we are to being exactly on lining up the last hole. And I'll show you how to do that. And we might make some minor adjustments so that we don't end up with uh, you know, the two holes right next to each other at the end. We'll do a pilot hole and then come back around with a full size hole. This is a quarter inch pilot. The full size hole is about 5 eighths. I've made it all the way around to within about 12 inches of the original hole I started with. So now we can put it in the template, put its nut on the back here, and then uh, check to see how close we're going to end up on the last hole. You know, if it was perfect, it would be a miracle. So it's pretty darn close. So you can see where they line up on each other. It's about half a hole off. So these are quarter inch holes, so that's 125 thousandths. So in the next 10 or so holes, I'm just going to crowd them in a little tighter to each other so that we'll come out just about spot on. And it'll be plenty close enough for this drive. So I just finished opening up all those holes to uh, 5 eighths of an inch. So that'll be with this cog wheel engages on to spin the drums. And we'll make this shortly. So this end down here is not very strong because we cut the end out of it. It doesn't have one of these rims up here that are really thick in plastic. So there's one more thing to do. We'll put a, a ring on that end to stiffen it up. I'm working now on a ring. We're going to make out of plywood. To reinforce the exit end of the drum. We cut this bottom out. It's not very stiff on this end, especially if it's in the sun when it gets warm. So we'll put a wooden ring on there just to give it more support to stay around. So we're going to do that with a piece of plywood. And I made a jig here. 
that my saw will fit in. It has all two holes set up, and we're going to cut a circle. Now we're going to cut the inner circle. So we've got another hole set up that's in closer. I'll put the screw in. And then I need a pilot hole, so I'll just take a pencil, mark out the beginning of the arc, and we'll drill a pilot hole. There you go, wooden disc. So I just finished putting a series of holes around this rim. We're going to put this reinforcing ring on it so that it'll maintain its shape. And there's going to be some wheels that ride on here and we want it to be round. Attaching the ring now with a series of screws through those holes. This section is now complete. <clears throat> there will be another section with half inch holes that will be ahead of this section. But it has the exit ring to keep that end stiff. We've got the holes drilled in the entry lip, which will be where the uh, drive gear goes in. And we have the sizing holes in the center, which will be where the uh, aggregate falls out. So it's ready to go out and get installed. I'm working now on making the cog that's going to drive the drum. This one's a prototype, but basically there's two pieces of laminated um, oak that we're going to put together with the grains going 90 degrees to each other. And then there's a hub that fits on the motor. This is one of the motors I'm going to use. That adapts the to the motor shaft. So all we're going to do right now is we'll glue these two up. This is a moisture cured glue, so a little water. Some glue. We're going to stick the hub through here. Turn the grain 90 degrees and put the other. Now I'm going to clamp it. There we are. After it dries, I'll drill and we'll put some uh, wood screws in here to hold the hub to the wooden <coughs> um, portion. This is all dry now. 
Take it out of the clamp. So now I'm going to screw the hub in, permanently attach it to the to the wood. So there we go. Next step, we'll put the dowels in here for the cog. Next up, we're going to put the holes in for the pins that go into this wheel to make the cog. So I've got a fixture here that I made. It's just uh, basically an index wheel. There's a screw that goes into each of the 13 positions. We're putting 13 pins in it. And uh, we'll set it up under here and, and drill the holes on the center. This wheel diameter is 3.725, 3 inches, 725 thousandths. And if you do the math, that will be 13 pins, will be 900 thousandths apart, which will work perfectly to engage into the 1 inch centers we put on the drum with the 5 8 holes. And it will give it some clearance so that the pins can make it up in, inside the drum. Let's make some holes. There it is, 13 holes, 900 thousandths apart. I drilled them 5 eighths of an inch deep, and they're half inch. And we're going to use a half inch dowel to make the, the pegs that come out from it. And we'll do that next. There's the 13 pins we need for the, uh, to go in those holes we just put. Their holes are 5 eighths of an inch thick, deep I should say, and the pin's an inch and a quarter, which will, or an inch and an eighth, which will put it uh, half inch above the surface. So 5 eighths inch deep, inch and an eighth, we'll have a half inch of um, cog exposed. So I have all 13 pins here, I knock the corners off of them, so they'll engage better in the drum, and we're going to Put some waterproof glue in here and glue them all together. Just get it on all the surfaces. Get these pins a little moist because it's water activated. Put it in place. Should be protruding about half an inch. And it is. So that's perfect. So there's the completed cod. After the glue dries, I'll clean it up and it'll be all ready to uh, drive the drum. Thank you. 
work for the lower chute is done. That'll feed into the trommel screen and the uh, top will get bars to pre-screen off anything bigger than about six inches. As you can see, I just made a wooden stand to support the motor, and the cog fits into the drum on this side. On the other side, there's a caster to support it while it spins. When it turns, it spins the drum. You want to spin the drum this way because it'll throw the material out towards the side you want to pick it up on. So here you can see the discharge, just the caster on each side, close to the rim we put on there to keep the drum around another wood frame to support it up off the ground. So here's the end result. Boulders end up over here. Fines come out of this section. Over here's half inch to two inch material and out the end I get five inch, two inch to five inch material. So I use the larger material for base on a road, muddy areas, places you need to build up a base. Use this on top of my road this here, if you air separate it, you know, take it in a bucket and drop it when it's a windy day, you can get the, the uh, pea gravel out of it. Use it around a, a walkway or a garden or on top of a road. Boulders, something aesthetic, I guess.